Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. This week, we'll be traversing the border between England and Wales as we take in the exciting sights and sounds of the M48 motorway. It covers a distance of 13 miles and has only got two junctions, and at face value you might think the M48 is a bit of a waste of space. However, this motorway used to be a key player in the game of transportation. The M48 opened in 1966 as the M4 and was the main motorway in and out of Wales, and indeed that's still the case today. So why has what started as the M4 become the M48? Why the name change? Why the shuffle around? A very good question allowed me to explain. As I said, the motorway was built in 1966 and with that came the Severn Bridge. When crossing the river, the motorway was only two lanes in either direction with no hard shoulders. And by the 1980s, it had become quite clear that the M48, or M4 as it was back then, and the Severn Bridge were reaching capacity. And they predicted by the mid-90s that both the bridge and motorway would be at full capacity with no option to extend or widen it. Not only was the amount of traffic increasing at an alarming rate, but the weight of the traffic was increasing as well. And this was putting additional strain on a bridge that was never really designed to handle such heavy traffic on a regular basis, a problem that was only going to worsen with time. The solution was to build a second bridge crossing, which was completed in 1996, and as part of its construction, the M4 was rerouted on the basis that the new route was shorter, and of course the newer, much larger modern bridge could handle the increased traffic loads with no problems. The M48 then became the M48, but as the old M4, renumbered as the M48. The M48 starts at the Orkley Interchange, where it splits from today's M4. And it's here that we find a secret junction that links the M48 to Catherine Hill. And on the other side, there's one that links the M48 to the M4 motorway. If we have a look at an old map, we can see where part of this secret junction used to be a through road, which would have crossed under or over the M48 before the new M4 came along. Junction 1 arrives not long after leaving the Orkley interchange, and it's here that you'll find Seven View services. Not only is there a services, there's also a view of the Seven. As I mentioned earlier, the Seven Bridge opened along with the M4 in 1966. And at the time, it cost £8 million to build, which in today's money is more. Up until 2018, you would have had to have paid a toll to cross the Severn Bridge. Fortunately, that's not the case today, but the original toll administration building is still in place right next to Seven View Services. And if you want to take a look at the building, it's easily accessed via this handy walkway bridge that comes out of the service station. The walkway bridge takes you over a grassed area, which is where the original lanes and toll booths would have been. Just before you reach the Severn Bridge on the westbound carriageway, I noticed this sort of weird slip road that's marked as administrative area. I'm not really sure what it's all about so if you've got any ideas please do let me know. I think it was probably related to the toll booths when they were open, maybe it allowed vehicular access in and out, I'm not really sure but here it is. Whilst the Severn Bridge is certainly the most well-known part, the crossing here over the Severn is actually made up of four different sections. To get onto the Severn Bridge one must first cross the Oust Viaduct which will take you down from the cliff tops onto the bridge. Then it's across the Severn Bridge itself of course before arriving at the Beechley Viaduct. This cross crosses over the Beechley Peninsula and the Beechley Barracks. And finally, you'll cross over the often overlooked River Wye Bridge. It's not as big or as impressive as his neighbour, but it's certainly a nice bridge indeed. The fucking wasp. Why is there a wasp? Fucking... After you've crossed over the Severn Bridge, as mentioned, you move on to the Beechley Viaduct and then on to the Wye Bridge. And it's actually when you cross this bridge that you finally enter Wales, because the modern boundary between England and Wales is marked out by the River Wye. You'd think that after crossing the Severn Bridge you'd be in Wales, but that's not the case. Having crossed over the Wye Bridge, Junction 2 arrives almost immediately after. There's not really a lot to see there, so we're going to move straight on. About two and a half miles up from Junction 2, and the M48 passes the extensive Carewent training area. It used to be a Royal Navy propellant factory that opened in the 1940s. Back then, they would manufacture and store ammunition on site, as well as conducting rocket motor or rocket engine testing. After the Cold War in 1967, the manufacturing was moved to a different site, and Carewent was handed over to the US Army, who used the site to store 80,000 tonnes of ammunition. In the early 90s, 12,000 tonnes of ammunition were shipped from Kerwen over to the Middle East during the Gulf War. A lot of the site was supplied via a branch line railway that connected with the Great Western Railway line at Caldicott Junction. There were many internal sidings and shunting areas, and before the original tracks were removed, old rolling stock and locomotives were stored here at Kerwen. As you drive along the M48, you'll pass under this bridge, which carried the branch line and the freight up to the munitions factory. The internet says that as of summer this year, workers started to remove all evidence of the railway and replace it with a cycle path and walkway. They're not doing very well. 
Today, the site is mainly used for military training, but the army do offer it out for civilian use. There's an airsoft place here, a few car clubs have organized car rallies on this site, and it's even been used as a filming location for Top Gear you know, in the old days when it was good. The site here at Carewent features in series 21, episode one. Anyway, back to the motorway, and a short distance up from our old railway bridge, the M48 crosses over the Nedham Brook, a 110 acre site of special scientific interest. Nailed it. It's basically a low lying flood meadow, which over the period of winter looks like a beautiful lake. In the summertime, more like a barren wasteland. We mentioned Carewent a short while ago, and it turns out Carewent was a Roman town, and it's believed that back then, trading vessels would sail up the Nedham Brook to Carewent from the River Severn. In time, the brook has silted up, no longer allowing such vessels to pass, and it's been reduced down to what is effectively a small stream. It's said that the silting up of the brook was exacerbated in the late 1800s following the construction of the Severn Railway Tunnel. It's not related to the motorway, but I found something quite quirky and interesting for us to have a quick look at. If you ever visit Caldecott Railway Station, then keep an eye out for the stupidly low bridge that's on offer. How low is it? Well, five foot nine, obviously, or 1.7 meters. There is a self-service level crossing right next door to the bridge for larger vehicles, of course. I'm not really sure though why you'd have a low bridge like that in the first place. It just seems to make things complicated. We're coming up to the end of the M48 now, which can be found at the Rogiat, Rogiat, Ro at the Rogiat interchange where the M48 meets the M4. Just as you approach the interchange, you'll cross over Bencroft Lane on a small bridge, and if you keep an eye out, you'll find a slither of what used to be the old M4 carriageway. The motorway used to run just straight through here on its way up to junction 23A on the M4 as we know it today. A few minutes up the road from there is the site of Ifton Quarry, a place that I can find very few details about other than it opened sometime in the mid 1800s, was used for military and emergency services training in the mid 1900s, and in more modern times has made the press after being listed as one of 28 areas of concern when it comes to cliff jumping. I don't really know what you'd count cliff jumping as, a sport or a hobby, I've no idea. But the basics behind it is you yeet yourself off a cliff into a quarry filled with water. I would give it a go, but you know, I've, I've got a mic on, the, the wind's going in the wrong direction, and there's no water in this quarry. I'd totally do it though, otherwise, and I totally could. Instead, the quarry shall serve as a wonderful place for a video outro. Thank you very much for watching indeed. I hope you liked the film. I've heard that there's a button specifically for that. We're well on our way to reaching that 100,000 subscriber mark, but if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That'd be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Also Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care, bye-bye.